Poco have recently been releasing a device after a device, so much so that I'm struggling to finish one review before the next phone comes in. I'm still enjoying the Poco F4 GT, their high-end gaming phone released a few weeks ago, but now we have a less expensive Poco from the main line of their products, the Poco F4. Coming with the same great chipset as last year's Poco F3, but with updated camera tech and charging, is it worth your hard-earned money? Let's see. The box is what we're used to from Poco. Black with yellow text, mentions that 5G connectivity may vary by region, and the fact that it supports the Google Play Store. My collection of Poco boxes keeps on growing, and this one fits it nicely. Well, unless you compare it to the special edition Beast box from the Poco F3 that we unboxed last year. Make sure to check that video if you haven't already. But let's open it up. Inside, we get the usual accessory box at the top. There's the SIM tray ejector tool, which we'll be using in the smartphone setup video, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to check it out soon on our channel. Inside, there's a wee bag that's both bad and good news. Bad news because it means that the phone doesn't come with a 3.5mm audio jack, but good that they included a USB-C to audio jack cable. So if you want to use your wired headphones, you don't have to buy an extra cable. There's usual paperwork, quick start guide, safety information and the warranty, so make sure to store them somewhere you remember. We also get a transparent plastic case for the phone, which will help you keep the device safe while you're waiting for delivery of another actual case you might want to use. Then there's the phone itself, with some key features on the sleeve, but let's leave it for dessert and see what else we got. And that's the charger. In this case, we get a 67W fast charger from Xiaomi, which should charge your device in just 38 minutes. In my non-scientific test, 38 minutes took the phone from 1% to 98%, which is very close to what they're promising. Granted, the battery isn't as big as some other devices, at 4500 mAh, but it should still be good enough to keep the phone powered for the entire day and top it up quickly overnight or in the morning. There's also obviously a USB-C cable matching Xiaomi's fast charging cables. And finally, the phone itself. Let's unwrap it first and enjoy it for a moment. This is the night black color. And there's also moonlight silver and nebula green. Nothing shouty this time, unlike some past devices. The design is more flat this time, with rounded corners, similar to the Poco X4 Pro 5G, which we featured on the channel back in May. But the X4 Pro seemed a bit wider, because of the wide camera unit, but the actual difference is quite small. Similar to the X4 Pro, this one also refracts the light a bit, but it's a bit less prominent here. It looks like it might be prone to fingerprints, but it actually seems alright, we'll have to see. I have to say, the Poco F4 feels quite slim and thin, and weighing in at 195 grams, it's quite light for a phone with such a large screen. Just don't expect the phone to be fully waterproof. However, it should easily survive a bit of rain or water, so you shouldn't worry too much about it. The camera unit on the bag is quite narrow this time, and doesn't protrude much, with a circular design this time. We'll discuss camera specs later in the video. On the front of the device, we got a lovely 6.67 inch AMOLED display. It feels like I'm getting spoiled, with the majority of recent devices coming with great screens, but I can't complain, it's always great to see. I've just watched an episode of Ms. Marvel, and the scenes where it was dark looked great, and the scenes with colorful lights looked really nice as well. Looks like a great device for consuming content. It also supports HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision standards, but it will depend on the content you're watching and the source it's coming from. Luckily, both are supported in the Netflix app. As expected, the screen is protected by Gorilla Glass 5, which should protect the screen in various situations. The phone also supports up to 120Hz refresh rate, meaning that the phone should feel battery smooth. It can dynamically switch between 60, 90 and 120 Hz as well, meaning it will save energy when needed, but use the highest refresh rate when it's worth it. And the phone should perform great thanks to a powerful Qualcomm Snapdragon 870 chipset. It's not the latest and most powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 we've seen on the Poco F4 GT, 
and it's actually the same exact chipset as in the last year's POCO F3, but I don't think it's an issue. The 870 is still a top of the line system on a chip, which will storm through any apps with eyes closed, and through even the most demanding games without issues, so I don't expect anyone complaining about the performance here. Our review unit came with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage and it's available in pre-sale right now at £279 but there's also the 8GB plus 256GB version at £329. Unfortunately, there's no microSD card slot, so you'll have to make do of the storage you have. Make sure to choose the storage option wisely. We'll do a full software experience and phone setup video really soon, but just to note, as of recording, the phone is on Android 12 and MIUI 13, Xiaomi's latest and greatest, here in the POCO version, but the security update is a bit behind, with the April 2022 patch. Since it's a pre-release phone, I'm expecting updates to come soon. To highlight a few other features, we also got stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos, NFC, depending on the market, IR Blaster, as well as my favorite feature in POCO devices, the side-mounted fingerprint scanner, which seems to be working great. Finally, let's briefly discuss the cameras. There's three at the back. What really stands out is that the main 64 megapixel camera comes with optical image stabilization, which will be great for sharper images, more stable video, but also improved low light performance. Optical image stabilization is really unusual at this price point, so I'm really excited to test this out. I'm just back from Portugal, and I was really happy about the POCO F4 GT's performance, which uses a similar camera setup, and that one didn't have OIS, so I'm expecting only good things. You'll be able to record the video of up to 4K 60 frames per second with it, so I'm really happy about it as well. There's also an 8 megapixel ultrawide camera, which is always great to have. I love taking landscape photos with ultrawide sensors. Unfortunately, it's limited to 1080p video, as you'd need a sensor closer to 10 megapixels for proper 4K recording. Unfortunately, the macro camera is a downgrade from the POCO F3 at just 2 megapixels, making it mostly useless. I guess you can't have it all. To round it off, there's a front-facing 20 megapixel camera with the usual portrait mode, which I'll have to test further, and again, 1080p resolution recording. And that's it for this initial video. We'll need more time with this device, but so far it looks like a great value proposition. You should expect great performance, good cameras, a beautiful screen, and a fantastic fingerprint scanner. Check the upcoming setup video in a few days and some comparisons with the POCO F3 or the POCO F4 GT, which we're currently reviewing. If you don't want to miss those, make sure to subscribe to our channel with notifications enabled. But for now, thanks for watching!